all into World of Tanks again. Today we have a SPIC replay, or SP1C, however you want to call it, on the Eurovanka map. I've been playing this tank a lot recently since I'd like to get, uh, get the RU251 before tier 10 uh, light tanks come out. So I don't have to play with the new tier 8, because I don't know if it's, if it's going to be any good at all. So I'll I'd like to, to get that out of the way before it might uh, end up being a bad tank. Uh, and yeah, let's get going I guess. I used the outloader on the SP1C. I used the single shotgun for quite a bit, but then switched back to the autoloader. Because at first I didn't really like the autoloader to be honest. I felt like, I don't know, it only had three shells, three seconds between shells. Felt like a long time. But uh, I've played uh, a lot of Swedish heavy tanks last month, uh, the Emil 1, Emil 2, since it was top of the tree for Grandwagen, and yeah, I'm used to that in the shell time now. So I was planning on going to get some early spots here, but the bad shot was already on that, and you see me push the, the tree over and then fall back. I do that because quite often there might be tanks pre-aimed or even RT pre-aimed at this position because it is quite a popular position and I'd rather be safe than sorry and we get a nice shot into the side of an E5 here I go for the s I try I, I tried to track him that here but uh, shot completely missed and we're on reload I reload a heat clip because well, we'll be shooting at heavies I know maybe people will uh, be angry at me because I'm uh, camping in a bush with a uh, with a light tank, but yeah, it's just I just like this position so much. In literally any tank, a medium, a tank destroyer, or a, or a light, and to be honest, we can compensate for the their armor with heat. So that's as long as that's in the game, that works. Uh, we did get spotted. That's the problem with this uh, with this position. You can't really rely on... Well, and my friend here in the T-30 also got spotted. Sadly, he did not fall back immediately. And as you will see, we will get now get wrecked by enemy artillery. I think the Conqueror gun carriage gets him... Ah, oh, it was a GW100. Shout out to the GW100 player, by the way. He, uh, he sent me... After this battle, he sent me congratulations on having played this well. So, sportsmanship on his side. <laughs> Very nice to see that in World of Tanks for a change, and not uh, not the usual cursing and name calling you get uh, in a private channel after the game. So that was quite a nice change of pace. But yeah, I don't think even with a T30 you'd want to sit here, because you don't really have the um, the camo rating to be able to do. As you can see, he was spotted before he even got in the bush, and it's just the heavies are so close by that if you don't have a good camo rating you will get spotted or if you're not fast enough here but ideally you'd want to sit in the bush before the heavies even get to the corner so and the T30 just can't do that because it's too bloody slow and that's why it's not the best of ideas now I'm looking to move up but I'm playing it rather cautiously because we just uh, some and we it wasn't us but somebody spotted the uh, the object 704 there and yeah if he hits me I lose what 90% of my hit points so if he can kill me with a high roll even I think so I'd rather not we're on uh, 1.3k spotting damage at this point the beautiful thing is if there's artillery in the battle and usually if the heavies stay where the E4s and their heavies stay here roughly we do get spotting damage for spotting them here so if Arta hits them, we do uh, we do get points for that, and now we get some beautiful side shots on the TVP. Sadly, can only connect two, but better two than none. I think we look for another opportunity for a last shot, but it's just not happening, and we get spotted. And there's a Death Star there. Who I don't think he can hit us, but the 704 is there as well. Some big guns, and then there's a TVP with his uh, very very scary auto loader. So. You have to get out. I'm surprised we got spotted here, but I think I didn't go far enough. Uh, we kind of came came here, where there was no concealment, and then went into the bush. So we got spotted uh, beforehand. Now we're looking at the side of the uh, Death Star. 
put in our first shell and then sadly we did get our second shell. I, I thought I thought I didn't get it here, but that's nice. We pent his uh it's the truth. <coughs> but to be honest I did stay there quite a little a bit longer than I should have. For the moment my sixth sense uh had gone off, I should have already fallen back. But I was a bit greedy getting the last shot in. Uh I do apologize for my voice if that's uh acting up today. <laughs> I have been drinking yesterday and my voice is not fully recovered yet. We missed our shot on the Death Star. Kind of sad because it was an easy shot. I guess it's just these shells have such an awkward uh, shell travel time. They fly so slow but we did get a full thousand spotting damage on that uh, on that Death Star when he got nailed by artillery. We had a shot on the TVP, but I wasn't fast enough on the trigger. And I know these shells fly so slowly that there was that there was just uh, just no way of getting that in. If I was a a, a, me a medium tank with APCR rounds, perhaps, but no, not not in this thing, not in this thing at all. I'm looking at the P4, but yeah, it's just that was a combination of a bad shot plus long shell travel time, and he is not going to come up far enough for us to slam in a shot or is he puts him on a one shot for a bat shot and well uh, type 5 heavy was already a one shot for him but so far the scores are tied but things are not going to stay that way very long so just waiting because I don't know why our bat shot He's going to complain in a second that uh, everybody's a noob on our team or something, but he rushed in against a T124 and uh, an Object 704, who had support from a TVP 5051 and three artilleries who were pre-aimed on his position since he was the only thing spotted. So, and he's going to complain then because we didn't help him. But to be honest, he rushed in. Uh, he rushed into his death, but. Looking at the scores, you think this is quite an easy win. We just have to dig out the DDs and GG. We have, yeah, that's see what happened. Exactly what I just said. Uh, he went in. I think he, uh, she took a shot from the 704 and then got nailed by artillery. And then he starts uh, raging in chat about RT being losers. So I, th I just told him, like, dude, you suicided. RT has nothing to do with it. You just went in and died like a. Uh, Potato, to be honest. We've got the TVP now. I was thinking about not firing uh, to not lose my camo, but he got too close and then had to. And then sadly, because we were firing heat, that, gun, that one got stuck in the fence. Now I'm running away because he needs three shells to kill me, so he kills me in about four and a half seconds. Not ideal. That was the E4, I think, that hit the. Uh, hit the, the. Oh my god, the hill. I can't even speak anymore. He hit the hill, but now the DVP gets one into us. And what I, you know, it's possible that you guys think that um, I might play a bit selfish here. What I do is I fall back behind the artillery and kind of let the Conqueror gun carrier spot for me instead of me spotting for him. Because looking at the teams, there is no way our team can win if I die. It's just, it might sound a bit selfish, but it's just the way it is, because it's three artilleries. I'm the only vision or mobile support that they that they have. They, they, they would just have to sit and wait and hope they can kill, um, they can kill the TVP, the T110 and the 704 when they come close. And then survive the th their three artillery, and then go to, to them and kill them. Luckily, the Conqueror does get TVP. We spotted their Batcha Arty who came here I guess to spot our artillery. I don't know what he was thinking. And now we have to be extra careful since uh, that shot from the TVP has put us on a one shot for the E4, a definite one shot for the E4 and the 704. They could kill us beforehand as well uh, if they rolled high enough. And I'm trying to get a new angle on the 704 because I couldn't really spot him nor damage him from where I was. We spot the E4 and he spotted us as well and now it's time to... You could see Artie was pre-aimed here. I think they still thought the Conqueror gang gang carriers would pop up here or it was because the Batcha Artie was heading this way but yeah. 
luckily. And there's the 704. He just fired, I think. Oh, that was RT. Sadly, that goes into his gun mantle. That does damage, luckily. Puts him on 300 health. And that one bounce as well. It's quite trollish to get through 704 with his gun. Definitely if he's higher than us, because his, the angling on his front increases. Which uh, makes it very hard for us to pin him. So now it's back to the 4v4. There's the bad shadow too. I didn't just want to rush up. Because, yeah, I've been snapshot by RT multiple times. I think even that day, I just, uh, I think it was even in my SP1C, I was just driving, spotted an RT. I tried uh, circling him, and he all he did was he was, uh, I think it was a batch RT. He just turned his third block, uh, uh, clicked, and I was dead. I was just like, come on, that RNG, really? Now I'm trying to go the long way around. The 704 did not actually spot us here. I was very surprised. I was like, yeah, screw this, I'm dead now. But at this range, he didn't even. He must not have Binox, or he must have lost his commander, I think. I can't remember the view range on the 704 being that bad, but their artillery was pre-aimed here for uh, to get the counter battery going. But luckily, R212 finishes off the uh, the 704, so it's not just a matter of getting the artillery out, and it's fairly easy. It's just the worst thing that can happen is that they snapshot me, and then it's an RT versus RT fight, which doesn't usually end up. Uh, well for the team with the least artillery, which is us, 2v3. So I'm trying to go around, because they will probably, they will be here, and I don't want to be obvious and go down this road, and I would kind of want to get a different angle on the bat chat as well. But here we spotted the GW100 and we just have to go at him, because he was not looking at us. Put in one, put in the second one, 31 hit points, and we finish him off. Now I'm hi trying to hide behind this corpse, so Conqueror can't get us. Not sure if that was a Conqueror shot, the bad chats, I think it was a Conqueror. And we're on reload. But it's just now a matter of our RT finishing off their RT and finding the bat shot. Artillery, which is still <laughs> in the same position he was. I was very surprised that he did not... Yeah, he did not move, like... You got spotted there, okay, but there was... I wasn't providing vision on that place the entire time so he could have moved but no he just sat there unsure why as in, well he moved up a little bit I, moved, I guess he moved up one square luckily he was not looking at us we put in one we put in two and we finish him off so here we are in a post game results this was my first ace tanker in the SP1C. It took me actually quite a long time to ace this uh, this little tank. Well, it was worth it. It was worth the wait for this game. I had fun. Sadly, no fancy medals, no top gun, no high caliber, no patrol duty, nothing. But just a a decent score, both on damage and on and on assistance. Looking at the team score, we got a whopping 1,700 plus base experience, which is, wow, I was actually quite surprised when I saw that number, I was like, well, we got an ace tanker, I looked at the team score, I was like, wow, we got that much experience? But I guess we were spotting and damaging tier 10s all the time, so that, I think that boosted it up quite a bit. Our two conqueror gun carriage has played very well as well, they have, they did a lot of damage with great support. 212A sadly did not do an awful lot of damage, but he was there in the end when he finished off the 704, which was quite crucial as well. And our bad chat, to be fair, he played decently until he rushed in and killed himself. I'm still not sure why he rushed in like that, I feel to understand, but that might just be me. And once again, shout out to the enemy GWE100 player who congratulated me after the battle and was really sportsmanlike. I like seeing that in World of Tanks and I hope I will I will witness that more often than uh, than not because the rage does get a bit old from time to time. <laughs> we fired 24 shells of which only 15 actually did damage. Not the best ratio but we did manage to pull uh, more than 3k damage so not too bad, and also 3.4k assistance damage, thanks to the uh, the good artillery players on our team. I a oh, thousand of that alone was already on the enemy Death Star who got double tapped by our RT. Uh, that was it. that was fun. 
well, not when it happens to you, but when you're in the light tank and you see those big numbers pop up and you know Artie hit something, that feels good. But that was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're getting bored of seeing light tanks a lot, uh, do tell me. <laughs> I'll try to change up the content a bit, but I'm just playing a lot of lights at the moment since it uh, since the changes that they're com bringing to light tanks. I'd like to get up as high as possible so I can get my tier 10 light tanks as fast as I can and hopefully uh, bring some awesome gameplay uh, of those tanks to you as well when they come out. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.